Good day, children. I am teacher Sulin Rodericks. I hope all of you are fine and keeping in good health by the grace of God. Today, we will be doing chapter 7 in history, titled Sports and History. Now, before we begin with the lesson, let us first see what is sports. Sports is an activity involving a lot of physical exertion and it also involves a lot of skills, different kinds of skills and either an individual or a group competes as a team for entertainment purposes. Now there are various different kinds of sports. So many of us either just view it or we play these different kinds of sports. We participate in those sports and we have a lot of fun time when we participate, especially in sports activities. Let us have a look at the history of sports. Now, playing is a very natural thing. It's a human tendency to play because that helps to bring a lot of pleasure. It gives joy. It entertains a person. So mankind has always been pursuing some kind of a sport or some kind of a game which would entertain him, which would give him a lot of joy. Now, in ancient times, right from the Stone Age time, hunting, although it was an occupation, was also viewed as a sport or a game because that was one place where the Stone Age man could show off his skill and expertise in the field of hunting. Later on, when different civilizations developed, we could see, we, or we can see a lot of different kinds of sports, the most prominent being the Greeks, who were very closely associated with sports activities. In fact, the Greeks were very, very uh, fond of sports and they took it very, very seriously. So they were the first ones to standardize the rules of sports and organize uh, various sporting events in a very systematic manner. They started sports competitions of discuss throw, horse and chariot races, wrestling and boxing matches, where different sports persons would show off their sporting skills in that particular uh, sporting event. These ancient events of Olympic uh, competitions were also organized by the Greeks. They would be held at this place called Olympia in Greece. Ancient Indian literature also makes a mention of various kind of games. Like we seen uh, this game of dice or dut uh, and shatranj that was uh, mentioned in the Mahabharata. Also, you have a lot of horse and chariot races and chess, which was always being played by these characters who are mentioned in different literature and even in the epics. So we come to know that games have been played since ancient times everywhere in the world whether it was in ancient times very very ancient times during the stone age or even later on when different civilizations came up now why is sports so important in fact sports is considered to be on the same lines in fact it's parallel to art and theater and dancing and singing for the simple reason that it provides a lot of entertainment but it also brings it's much more it's much much more than these things it just does not bring mere pleasure and joy but it also gives a lot more than that 
like different kinds of sports and games enable us to overcome sufferings and worries when we play those games for that time being we forget whatever is uh, causing us a lot of anxiety games also help us to relax and refresh our minds and games which involve a lot of physical activities they provide a good exercise that enables a person to become physically fit it's a very very good way of exercising the body games also help in building a tenacious and strong body that is your flexibility increases your uh, agility increases playing games also helps in developing qualities such as courage determination sportsmanship learning to accept defeat learning to give it uh, a game or an event your best shot games needing collective participation help us to develop a sense of cooperation also you realize that it's not your individual input that will help you win you work as a team so that helps also in developing a team spirit and someone who can lead that team and direct the various players uh, proves to be an asset to the team so games can also help in developing leadership qualities in people sports professionals also serve as inspiration for others those who are very very good at a particular sport because of the manner in which they play that sport they inspire others also to pursue that sport or develop qualities like that particular that particular sports person learning a sport instills a healthy level of self discipline in children from a very very young age children learn the value of team ethics no cheating while playing hard work preparing well for a particular game and also if practice is needed giving enough time to practice a particular game or a particular sport now in india and like other parts of the world there are various training centers for various different kinds of sports here you have a mention of all these different places in india where you have training centers for sports let's have a look at the type of sports that you have there are two main categories of sports indoor games and outdoor games now what are indoor games indoor games are those that are played in a closed environment either in the house or in the courtyard but it is a closed environment there's a concealed or a limited boundary within which a number of people sit and play that means most of these games are played by sitting in one place examples of indoor games are chess card games uh, games played using a dice carrom there are many many traditional indian games that were played since ancient times like there's a game called kats kavadiya or tokavara which is also known as the indian ludo that was a very very popular game among indians another game which used to be played by girls was the sagar gote where this game was played using either seeds like the tamarind seed or stones smooth rounded pebbles one other game which is a favorite with girls is called the batukali that is playing house using balls especially that part where a mock wedding is arranged that becomes like an occasion of a family celebration because many people are needed to create that wedding kind of an environment so a lot of people can join in playing this 
and becomes like a big celebration for children especially. Then you have outdoor games. Outdoor games, the name itself tells you, are games that are played out of a house, out of a complex, in an open space. These can be further categorized into two types. Indian sports and international sports. Indian sports or Indian games would include the traditional ones like Langdi, Kabaddi, Atiya Patiya, Kho Kho, Archery, Wrestling. You also have the very, very traditional ones that would be played like Lagori, played using seven stones. Or the Gili Danda, which is also known as Viti Dandu in Maharashtra. The Bhingri, where people turn around, spinning around. The Bhaura, or it's also called Latugmana, where you spin tops. Girls like to play these outdoor games traditionally. The Pugdi and the Jima, which was very, very popular in Maharashtra. There was also, it still is, kite flying. That's a very, very popular, in fact, it's almost a, not just a game, it's a popular festival now, which occurs in the month of January. Outdoor games that are played at the international level would include games like badminton, table tennis, hockey, Cricket, football, golf, polo, most of these are team games. They are played by more than two players. You also have these games connected with athletics and water sports among these outdoor games like sprinting or running for short distances like 100 meters and 200 meters sprint or dash you also have the middle distance that is 400 meters race and the long distance races which are 800 meters race uh, 1200 meters race also and the greatest one of all which is a great test of grit or determination and endurance, that is the marathon race, which has been popular right since ancient times. Other type of athletic races include hurdles and the relay race. You also have many other kinds of athletic races like the shot putt and the discus throw, long jump, high jump. Under water sports, you have competitions or games that you could have like swimming, water polo, rowing, canoeing, boat racing. There are sports that are a combination of physical exercises as well as acrobatics. One great example of this is the Indian Malkam. You also have the rope Malkam, which is done using a rope. And you have the floor gymnastics. All these are included in outdoor sports. And all these are a test of not just the physical skills of people who participate in them, but these also test how physically fit these athletes are. You also have a number of adventure sports or adventurous games. A lot of people pursue these kind of sports nowadays because these sports lend a spirit of adventure they rouse the adventurous uh, 
spark in people. And therefore, a lot of people like pursuing these sports. Some examples of adventure sports would be skating, skiing, skydiving, uh, rock climbing, mountaineering, gliding, motor car racing, bike racing, white water rafting, all these various kind of uh, games that I've mentioned or sports that I've mentioned could be looked as adventure sports. Now, in today's world, sports is not just uh, held or performed for, um, uh, for uh, entertainment purposes, but it also rouses the competitive streak in people. So now you have a lot of different kinds of sports competitions that are held, the biggest ones being the Olympics, then you have the Asian Games, also known as the Asiad Games. You have the Commonwealth Games. You ha even have the Paralympic Games where uh, Olympics are organized for disabled people. We don't call them disabled. You call them physically challenged nowadays. So you have special Olympics for the uh, physically challenged people. Then there are various different kinds of World Cups, like you have the ICC Cricket World Cup, the Hockey World Cup, FIFA, which is very popular, that's the Football World Cup. These are events that are organized on a regular basis. There are international competitions for many other sports like athletics, wrestling, chess, etc., which are organized on a very grand scale. All these competitions and all these different kinds of sports and games are organized at different levels. They could be at the local level, the taluka level, the district level, between cities, between states. You could have it at the national level where people from different states participate. And you could also have it at the highest, that is the international level where people from different countries would participate in a particular sporting event. Now, why is it so important for athletes and sports persons to compete? That's because these people who perform well in national and international competitions, they get a lot of fame and recognition. And also sports enables them to have good career prospects. Today, the world of sports has changed a lot because of globalization that has taken place. Globalization is games and various sporting events that were played locally on in a particular region have, can now be played anywhere in the world. People from other countries have learned to play those sports and those games. International matches of various sports like cricket, football, lawn tennis, and many other sporting events can be watched on television in any corner of the world now because of globalization of sports. For example, the World Cup matches that were played uh, by Indian cricketers and other cricketers from other countries also are watched by cricket fans from all over the world. Or Kabaddi tournaments played by different teams are viewed by people from every part of the world, especially those who are fans of this game. So in this manner, citizens of the non-participating countries can also view these matches and these tournaments and they can get a lot of entertainment and they can also pursue their sport. Sports fans scattered all over the world have significantly affected the manner in which the sports economy functions. Sports fans watch matches not just for entertainment, 
if they are very very big fans of a particular kind of a sport they buy a lot of merchandise related to that sport for example people who are football fans of a particular country or a particular football club they go and buy jerseys belonging to that particular club or that particular country industries and commercial companies also look at sports events as a very good opportunity to advertise their products and therefore they become sponsors for matches and sports teams and big sports events retired sportsmen also have an opportunity to participate as commentators many experts also get an opportunity to become referees and umpires and given their expert comments for newspapers and sports journals toys play a very very important role especially in games now what are toys toys are nothing but the means and equipment used for the entertainment and education of children but they can do a lot more than that also toys can also help in throwing light on the history and the technological progress that took place in the past we can get a glimpse of the religious events and the cultural traditions of the past through toys as a part of for example traditional diwali celebrations model forts are constructed at the intersections near the road at corners near the road especially at the time of diwali so many of you may have noticed this clay images of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj and his soldiers dressed in traditional attire and also people and animals are placed on these model forts so you get a glimpse of what the culture must have been like at that time these traditions help to keep the memory alive of important roles of forts in the history of maharashtra so that's an indirect way of learning about the history of a place dolls are mentioned in ancient indian literature an ivory doll made by indian craftsmen was found in the excavation of pompeii and in ancient uh, italy which is dated to the first century current era this artifact that has been excavated this doll that has been excavated throws light on the trade relations that were there between the indians and the romans italy was a part of the roman empire so we come to know about the trade relations that were there at that time between india and rome clay toys have also been found in a number of archaeological excavations like at mohenjo daro and harappa these toys help in telling a lot about the cultural contacts between different nations at ancient times now sports is related nowadays to literature and a lot of other things that provide entertainment through sports like you have various books and encyclopedias and magazines which are published about various sports that's a newly developing enterprise or a newly developing business like the history of malcolm has been recently published in a book which is part of marathi literature there is an encyclopedia on the subject of exercises and yoga till some years ago there was a sports magazine that used to be published named shatkar where sports persons who had done excellently well in different kinds of sports especially cricket Uh, a lot of things used to be mentioned about them in that magazine 
there is also a lot of literature available in english and many different regional languages and foreign languages on different kinds of scopes for this purpose knowledge of the history of sports is essential without that knowledge it would be difficult for people to write articles for various publications that's where this history of sports or knowledge of the history of sports proves to be very very important you also have some television channels which are exclusively devoted to sports and they only telecast various matches tournaments and sporting events taking place in different parts of the world some of these television channels are like 10 sports star sports cspn recently some movies on sports and biography of great sportsmen have been released in various languages for example you had these two films became, that became very very prominent one was the film on mary kom who was the first indian female boxer to participate in the olympics and win a bronze medal for india and the other movie was dangal which was based on the life story of the fogat sisters who were the first indian female wrestlers to win gold medals at various international competitions now movies like these require a deep study of the particular period around which the story of that movie would involve the language use the dressing style the social life along with that also knowledge about what that sport was like at that time whether it is it was the same like what it is now it was a little different it was a little rural it was a little crude at that time so all these detailed researches have got to be done so a student of history who is well trained and equipped to do research on these various sports that are depicted in these movies can help in adding to the credibility of the movie that is the genuineness of the movie how real that movie can look so you see sports offers a lot of different kinds of professional opportunities now to people if they have the knowledge of that particular sport like a student of history can find so many different opportunities in the field of sports journalism that is if that person has to write articles for newspapers for sports journals or sports magazines that person would need to resort to history because writing articles and reviews about sports events like the olympics or any other game or any other sporting event would require a great deal of in-depth knowledge about that sport and one would be able to get that knowledge from records that have been maintained about that sport that is where history or historical knowledge of that sport would come into play and a student of history would be able to find an opportunity to lend some kind of information on that sport expert commentators are in demand during sports matches and expert commentator would need to have good knowledge of the history the statistics the previous records held by great sports players the great players of that particular sport anecdotes based on that game funny incidents that have taken place which were turning points of a particular sporting event or a match all this kind of knowledge would help to make that commentary more lively more animated 
so the knowledge of history of a particular sport would be very very useful for expert commentators and again a student of history would provide that knowledge to these people matches of various sports like cricket football kabaddi chess these are telecasted live round the clock throughout the day through on various television channels the role of professionals who keep a track of the various matches and tournaments and also have a record of these telecasts from the various different channels that has become very very important now so there are many professional sorry professional opportunities for people who can do this who have a collection of all these kind of matches referees and umpires are an essential factor of sports matches in order to become a referee or an umpire people have to pass qualifying exams qualified referees and umpires can work at various levels the district state national international levels so they also find employment opportunities because of that particular sport government and private sectors nowadays promote sports by offering scholarships to sports persons there are also reserved seats in um, big offices and big uh, organizations for sports persons that's how sports persons can get a lot of professional opportunities so you see sports also requires an intensive knowledge of history if you want to become great professionals and do well with your knowledge of that particular sport that's all have a nice day